Good morning, everybody. My name is Jenny Wilder. It is my joy to welcome you this morning. I serve as the rector of St. Anne's, and I want to uh, welcome everybody who's joining us from home, too. We are grateful for your presence. Normally at this time, I would ask you all to offer up any prayer requests in the comment section, but since we are doing renewal of baptismal vows, we will not be doing prayers of the people. At least I think that might be the case. Either way, it's been a long and exciting and exhausting week. Uh, and we are at that precipice where we leap off into the resurrection. So please, uh, alleluia. 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 So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the intro. Again, good morning and welcome. Thank you. 
is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's ring some bells. God be with you. Let us pray. O God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings of Scripture. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please remain seated as we read the psalm in unison. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of
a reading from 1 Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So when I was in seminary, our professor for liturgical music used to say, nobody goes home humming a sermon. <laughs> Today we're going to prove him wrong. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, use the gospel passage to kind of do a retelling of the story, but there'll be opportunities for you to sing along the way, and when it comes time for you to sing, this is what you get to sing. Alleluia, the great storm is over, lift up your wings and fly. Let's try that with me. Alleluia, the great storm is over, lift up your wings and fly. One more time, louder for the people at home, here we go. Alleluia, the great storm is over, lift up your wings and fly. Oh, beautiful. It's like you knew this was coming. <laughs> it was morning, and Mary and Mary and Salome, they gathered together, and the grief was deep in their hearts, riddled with pain, doubt, and wonder. It's not good to be alone when you feel that way. So they sought each other out. And Mary said, I, I don't know what to do. And then the other Mary said, well, there is something we can do. Let us go to the tomb and see for ourselves. Let, let us take spices and incense and flowers in our, in our memories. Let us prepare his body, love him to the very end, the way that he loved you and he loved me. So they took off with their feet gracing the ground, and where there was withered grass that had turned brown, the dew still clinged to it, and when it touched their feet, it left a mark of water. What a powerful symbol, water. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. And as they, uh, let's see, as they made their way to the tomb, they were quiet wrestling with their own gloom and wondering. How are we gonna roll away the stone? Wait and see, just wait and see. As they walked up the hill and they saw the tomb there, suddenly the earth shook and an angel of the Lord appeared and he said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. He kept his promise. And we all sing. Alleluia, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. that was in their hearts shifted to confusion. What do you mean he's not here? What do you mean he's gone ahead of us? What do you mean he will see us in Galilee? He was dead. We saw him on the cross hanging in Calvary. But the angel of the Lord said, no. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. The job he came to do to prepare his body for the tomb has been changed to a new job. And this is the truth. You are here to come and see. Come and see so that you can go and tell. Go and tell all the disciples. Tell the disciples to make their way to Galilee. Because the death did not win. Death did not win, you see. Darkness has not overcome the light. That light you feel right now in your body, and your soul, and your heart, that's the gift of Jesus Christ and it's everlasting life. He gave it to you and to me to liberate each of us and set us free so that we might walk about from here to Galilee. 
across the globe, across Winston-Salem, to all the people we go and see, we tell them to come. Come and see. Come and see the miracle of the resurrection. And we sing. Alleluia, the restored is over. friends is perhaps you have felt some grief or some gloom way down deep in your soul since the beginning of Lent or maybe even longer but that liberation that Jesus gave to his disciples to his friends he he gave to each of us it's right there all we have to do is say yes to receive that's what it means when they say Jesus died for you and for me so that we might be free to receive the grace of God, to receive it from the King of Glory. To hold fast in our darkest moments, to hold fast in our saddest of days, this is the gospel truth, this is the plan that was made. I love you to the very end, but this is not the end. Death has not won, and darkness has not overcome the light. Let me say that once again, just in case I didn't say it right. Jesus said, I love you. Jesus said, I love you to the very end, but this is not the end. Death has not won, and darkness has not overcome the light. In fact, my friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Hallelujah. And we sing. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. attention to renewing our baptismal vows and I invite anybody who's of a certain stature that like to come close to see what's going on to come on over to the fountain. <clears throat> Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's so. help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and when you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. 
Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation, and through it, you led your children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus Christ received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. And through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that, that those who are here are cleansed from sin and born again, may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To whom, with you, to, whom to you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Mary, Mary, will you help me with the asperges? So Mary and I are going to come around with water and a branch, and we're going to fling water at you. <laughs> and the thing about that, is you are to remember who you are and whose you are. Remember your baptism. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another with peace.
is, is good news. And in addition to that, uh, following the service in the parish hall is a time of refreshment. It is our agape Sunday, which means the refreshments are like quadrupled. <laughs> and we need your help to make sure that our kitchen is not super stacked with stuff tomorrow. So please join us after, after the service and for time of fellowship. Speaking about after the service, for our little ones, there will be an Easter egg hunt out here and in the, in the playground area and one in the front yard. So our kids, uh, after the service, you can run out there and gather eggs and have a blast doing that. Believe me, there's more than enough. <laughs> okay? Um, I also want to talk a little bit about communion. Uh, if you are new to the Episcopal Church, please know that our table at St. Anne's is open to everybody. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, or what you've done, or where you've been, or where you're going. Uh, at, here, you are welcome to receive bread and wine. If you need gluten-free, we just ask that you put your fist over your heart so that uh, Mary and I know you need a gluten-free host. We don't read minds. We haven't gotten that gift yet. Um, <laughs> if you would prefer a blessing, just cross yourself like this, and we will offer you a blessing. When it comes to the cup of wine, it's actual wine, so don't be surprised. Um, and you can either intink just the host, not your fingertips, and intink means you dip. Uh, you can also sip, or you can just touch the cup. That is fine, too. Or if you don't want to partake of the cup at all, you can re re uh, leave the rail after you receive the host. And I think that's about it. If you are having trouble moving, we will come to you. Just let us know. Send someone up to let us know that you are having difficulty moving, and we will come to you. So uh, that being said, let us turn to the front of our bulletin to read our mission statement. Knowing that all things come from God, we seek to manifest the love of Christ through worship, justice, and community. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before you died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Anne and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
are the gifts of God for the people of God. Holy food for holy people. And this is the Lord's table where all are welcomed and fed.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love you, serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Having been fed at this table to go out and feed others, just a few announcements. First, I would like to give a special thanks to Margaret, our violinist, and to Brian, our trumpeter, and to Caitlin for a beautiful introit, and to the choir, and to Terry. Thank you all. If you've made a Holy Week sandwich, then you know there's a lot of hands and hearts that make this happen. And I want to give thanks to Joss for her keeper of details and making sure that we are all on where we need to be. And to all of our lay folk who have helped in the altar guild, in the reading of the lessons, and serving on the altar, carrying the cross, and checking in with us to make sure that we're okay. <laughs> For that, I give you thanks. So thanks for all of our ladies. And also a big thank you to our Bread and Blessings Committee for the soups for their in the Lenten program and for today's feast and presentation and, pre and preparation. We give you thanks. So thank you to our Bread and Blessings team. And also to our AV Tech team who make it possible for people hundreds of miles away to join us for worship. So we give you thanks for that. Now, here's some stuff you need to know. Mark is out of the office Monday and Tuesday this week. So the office will be open on Wednesday at 10 a.m. We will have Celtic Eucharist on Wednesday. The Reverend Chris Payton Travers will be our, our supply clergy for that. And next Sunday, the Reverend Steely Cross will be our supply clergy for um, the Doubting Thomas Sunday. And um, I will also be out of the office. I will return on Tuesday, April the 9th, yes, at 10 a.m. So, all that being said, thank you all for making this a wonderful week. It's been great. And I just have a commercial for yes. the food pantries. I am loving all the diapers you guys are bringing in. Please continue to do that because it's a never-ending need. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Diapers and wipes. And, and one more uh, offering of thanksgiving to all the volunteers who made our third annual yes. Neighborhood Easter Egg Hunt yes. such a success yesterday. <laughs> God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.